Okay, in this video, I'm going to begin a series of tutorials on complex numbers and hope that I'll be able to show you all you need to know in order to use complex numbers in your physics mainly, but also your mathematics or engineering if that's relevant to you. So I'm going to maybe have three, maybe four videos and this will have everything you need to know. First and foremost, complex numbers are pretty straightforward, so you don't need to be worried about them at all. I'd like that you just uh, you bear with me with my handwriting. I'm using a new stylus. I usually use um, record on an actual video, so my handwriting won't be great on this, but I'm sure you can bear with me. So to begin, we know of course that there are different types of numbers in the world. Initially, I suppose we would have had, um, it, let's just assume that we had zero, but we have zero, one, two, three, and so on up to infinity. And we call these the positive whole numbers. And this number line of positive whole numbers is quite useful. It allows us to calculate or to count the number of people in the house, the number of cars passing up and down and so on. But I'm sure you're aware that it's, it's quite limited. It doesn't do things, for example, like subtraction. So then we came up with the negative whole numbers. So we have minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, and three. So now what we can do is we're able to do subtraction as well. So we can do quite a few of our uh, you know, normal day-to-day -day, um, uh, arithmetic. But there's there are limitations with this as well. So the next set of numbers to come out of this were the rational numbers. So the rational numbers then are when you divide two whole numbers, well when you divide numbers I suppose you could say. So let's go again. So we have numbers like pi. We have a number we have numbers like e. 0 0.5. So the rational number line allows us to do lots of things. So we can now do multiplication, addition, subtraction and division. But the next thing we need to look at are square roots. The rational or the the number line as it stands right now allows us to compute positive uh, square roots or, whole, or positive square roots but not negative square roots. Why is that? Well first of all let's look at what a square root actually is. So if we take the square root of a so if we multiply the square root of a positive number by itself we get the positive number back. So let's look at the the properties of multiplication. If you multiply two positive numbers we get a positive number. If you multiply a negative and a positive number, of course you get a negative number. And if you multiply two negative numbers, we get back a positive number. Now why is this important? Well, if we take the square root of positive, a positive number, it must be positive. Okay, but what if we look at the square root of a negative number? The square root of the neg negative number, well, what, can, what can it not be? Well, it can't be negative. Why can it not be negative? Because if we multiply two negative numbers, we get back a positive number. It can't be positive either, because if we multiply two positive numbers, we get back a positive number. But we're trying to get the square root of a negative number, so it must give us back a negative number. So it seems like we're stuck. And we, we were stuck for quite a while, until the following idea has come upon. So let's go back to our number line. So we have our number line, we have zero, let's say for argument's sake, we have positive and we have negative infinity. And the idea was the following, in order to get the square root of minus one, we think of it as being perpendicular or orthogonal, uh, on a line perpendicular or orthogonal to the real number line, or the, the number line that we're familiar with. So it does this. Well, that's pretty awful. So while we had the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and so on, and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, we now start having numbers with i, 2i, 3i, minus, minus i, minus 2i, minus 3i. So instead of having an infinite number plane, excuse me, an infinite number line, now we have an infinite number plane. 
and we call this an Argand diagram. So if anybody's asking you to draw an Argand diagram, you now know what an Argand diagram is. You have the normal number line and perpendicular to it, you put the number line of the uh, the number line of uh, complex numbers. So we have the complex the complex numbers basically are where we talk about the square root of minus one. All right. So why is uh, why is this useful? We'll talk about that in the next video. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. I might also click on. Uh, uh, excuse me. You might also add a comment.